Hello, girls. Hello. Oh, wow. So, uh... Ex everything. Ex everything. Ex married as well, he is. <laughs> so we're here to witness the day that Jay Franken conquered the world of golf. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting 20 years for this. It could go anywhere. I've hit one backwards before. No idea where it was going. What's it like to be the only person still alive that has a race named after them? It was a really nice gesture. It's my local track, Newbury. Um, it's a race that's produced no end of good horses. That is making my back hurt watching you do that. Yeah, you won the Hennessy a couple of times, didn't you? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I rode two really nice horses, Borough Hill Lad and Brown Chamberlain. Both had top weights. Both, you know, steering jobs. Yeah. You wouldn't have got a sweat on either. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That's the best golf shot I've hit all year. I know. You, all right, you can get out your pose now. <laughs> when you started riding, John, was there a certain jockey you looked up to and you thought, I want to be better than him? Or... David Mould was the ultimate stylist, and so was Johnny Hayne. In terms of riding, Jeff King is as good as anybody I've seen. Do you think those lads could have competed now, and I suppose they, they could definitely, the They definitely yeah. would. Right, shall we go and find your ball then, Johnny? Yeah, Somewhere let's go and have a look. It's in the trees on the left. You look back and you cringe. You look at the way that people are now in their fitness levels and their styles. I was the most untidy jockey, and I was never particularly strong, but I was not stylish. And Robin Dickin, I rode a winner at Worcester one day, and I came in and he said, I'd rather finish second than look like you in a finish. It was a great line, I mean, and, and he used to get changed next to me, and I said, well, th that, that's it and everything. I'd rather win and look Shaped beautifully. No idea where it went. So if you were in charge of racing, what would you change? I'd certainly make a break in the summer for yeah. jumping and also in the flat. The effort and the, the hours that jockeys put in, um, and it's easy for people to say, well, they don't have to ride there, but you know yourself, if you've got a retainer with somebody, you feel like you're letting them down if they've got runners and you're not riding them. Right, where are we off to? We're off to the green to find my two balls that are on it. It's like the Premier League being the biggest show in sport, and it has a break. Yeah, listen, there's a famous saying, if there's always biscuits in the tin, where's the fun in biscuits? I'm not one to ask about biscuits no, at the moment, because I am doing There's no tin. biscuits in your tin, I know that. It's in the bunker. Also, for the whip, I do away with that. And nobody goes racing to see horses beaten up. How many more winners would you have ridden with no whip because you'd have been stronger and you had a better racing brain in your head than most of the others? I'm not sure about the proper, but the racing brain, but stronger, I, I think I'd have survived pretty good. With I, others, think, you know? I think you'd have ridden more yeah, winners. I do, think, I do think I'd have, I'd have survived yeah. pretty yeah. Good, more than yeah. others. I think that it's, makes you think. It's less, you know, you become less reliant on it. Oh my God, not for camera that was it. On a much more serious note, do you ever think that you could crack golf the way you cracked racing? No. <laughs> no, but the only good thing is I've never kidded myself. There you go, John. Very good, very enjoyable. Thanks. Not sure we're any the wiser, but... Well, it's always a good experience. Not always a good one, but an experience. <laughs>